Hi there. My name is Kay Moon and I'm a Twin Flame Channel and Western Astrologer. And this is a video about the new moon in Leo taking place on August 16th at 5.37 a.m. If you happen to be on the eastern seaboard of the United States, please check a time zone converter for your local time. Welcome to this new moon of supreme self-love. I'm super excited about this energy for all of us. I think that this is going to be an energy that moves us all forward in some really positive and healthy directions. And I'm going to talk about all that in a moment. A couple of quick announcements. If you were interested in private mentorship, that is definitely something that is going to happen this fall. Um, and I would be very interested if you're in, if you'd like to join a focus group about it to talk about the format, the setup, and the structure of it, and to make sure that you get out of it what you want. I'll be having a focus group on August 15th. So it's just a few days away uh, at 5 p.m., sorry, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern time. And I will uh, be announcing that to the private list with a Zoom link for you to join. If you're not on the private list, the link to do that is below this video. Get on the private list. I will not be posting the Zoom link for the focus group here to YouTube. It's just going to be for people who are that interested. They're willing to sign up to the private list, share their email. I'll be in contact with you so that you can know specifically here's, here's what we're doing. Here's when we're going to do it. And the private listers will also be offered space in the private mentorship program for astrology uh, first. So once they've all taken their spaces, then I will offer private mentorship to the public. So if you know you want to get in on that and you want to get an astrological certification with me, then you absolutely want to make sure you're on that list. Link is below this video. If you don't want to do that, you're willing to wait for the YouTube components, that's totally fine. I will be sharing a survey after the focus group to YouTube so that if you want to join and share your opinions about the way the private astrological mentorship is structured, you can do that through the survey. Normally this time of the year, this is announcement number two, I offer a group coaching program that's non-astrological called Q&A with K. And uh, previous themes, it's usually kind of like, it's a four week program with uh, light coaching and teaching per session once a week for four weeks. And then the floor is wide open to private coaching and mentorship and question and answers with me on all things spiritual. Historically, they have been a little bit twin flame focused, but this year we may go a little bit more light worker focused for the greater collective here. In 2020, the theme was taming the runner in you. In 2021, we went through the seven divine mirrors that twin flames may face in their connections. And then in 2022, we talked about preparing for union. This year's theme is really up to you and I'd love your thoughts and opinions on it. Over in the community section, you'll see there's a post with lots of conversation already going around this. You can upvote any theme that you really like or add a theme of your own. We'll be launching Q&A with Kay as we get close to the end of August. And then stay tuned. This is the third announcement and final one till the end. If you're new here, welcome. We I do something called first look at the end of every video where I look ahead to the lunation coming and talk you through my first impressions of that so you know how to prepare. This new moon in uh, Leo here is a very fun one. Here's our new moon. Uh with the sun and the moon and this new moon is flanked by Venus and Lilith there also inside of Leo. There's also a square here to Uranus, which is making spicing things up, making them very interesting. Squares can bring out a lot of tension and Uranus can bring out surprises. And then we also have a trine to the north node in Aries here. 
and to Chiron in Aries as well. That North Node Chiron conjunction has all of our stuff coming up collectively. We also have a trine here to Eris, E-R-I-S in Aries as well. So this is entertaining <laughs> to say the least. Um, yeah, uh, Lilith Eris and Chiron, that combo has me, I'm going to say concerned for some of us, but also cheering for the rest of us <laughs> because in the shadow, that combo can get real petty real fast, but in the light, that combo is really ready to take a stand for itself in moments and places where it has truly been long overdue and that's exciting to see um we may see in this energy people including ourselves egos self-express in some unusual unforeseen unpredictable surprising and shocking ways especially in circumstances where you may have felt repressed oppressed excluded rejected or disenfranchised from the abundance that you may see your peers or others that are part of your group partaking of in some capacity. And so whether it's by somebody else's doing or our own, you know, we're either disenfranchised by somebody else or we are self-victimizing in some kind of way, you'll see that the new moon is in Leo with Lilith and Venus here is a fire sign. And then we've got this nice little triad up here in Aries, also a fire sign. This fire rich combination uh, has us acutely, like highly aware of where we are underpaid, underappreciated, underserved, under earning, and in a place where we've probably hit our limit in participation of that atmosphere and rather prepared to withdraw our services and just do our own thing or flip the script and do the opposite of what we normally do in response to others or circumstances where we find ourselves on some sort of perceived less equal footing. Now, you might actually be on less equal footing, you know, like you may be doing the same job as everyone else at the ice cream shop, but getting paid, you know, maybe, you know, 30 cents less on the dollar than they are. Or you, it may be perceived unequal footing where it's like you've got full access and rights to everything everyone else does, but somehow, some way, you've got the story that people are taking things from you. That's a very common storyline here in the United States as we're seeing an influx of migrants into the country. And I'm sure in other countries as well, in uh, the European Union, along the Mediterranean coastline, where people, you know, have this story somehow that the migrants are taking all of our jobs and they really can't because they just don't have the work paper and visas to do so. Um, it's just not available to them in the same way it's available to you, but that victimhood story where you're kind of self-victimizing could be really strong. These are strong tropes in the collective consciousness right now. Um, so, and you get with the Uranian activation in the midst of all of this, you might see people taking some unusual actions um, in response to either it's actual disenfranchisement or perceived disenfranchisement because that's where we see Eris start to really kick up and do her thing around taking quote taking back her power and Lilith as well especially when they're in conversation with one another like they are at this new moon opening up a new chapter and a new cycle okay um, and this is going to be especially powerful because of the flow of influence from Pluto on Uranus. So Pluto specifically deals with fear and Pluto as the outer planet is over here influencing Uranus 
in a configuration we astrologers call a trine. So it's like a slide of energy. All of Pluto's power is sliding directly into Uranus. And Pluto deals with power. Pluto deals with fear. Um, and Uranus deals with change and evolution. And so what we get is this ability to confront fear and wield its power to change, evolve, transform, and quantum into some new behaviors. Because fire signs constitute spiritual changes that demand action of some format. Now, here's the deal. I do not condone violence, verbal or emotional or physical or otherwise of any format. But the shadow side of this energy can take it there if we aren't careful. A moment of lashing out or power tripping or projecting our own self-victimization can have others lashing back instead of just taking it or just acting in grace and mercy in this energy. In other words, you might have a weak moment and like, you know, someone net close to you may get a tongue lashing of yours. This is the moment where you might get back what you dish out. Hashtag Bama Brawl, hashtag folding chair. If you know, you know. Now look. It's going to be really important in this energy to be mindful of how we say what we say to people, how we ask for what we need and want, how we take that stand for ourselves, and most especially what our true needs are. And the reality that we are truly capable of not only meeting our needs, but also having exactly what we want. Like it's, it's possible. We can have it. We're divine creator beings incarnate. There's a real hopefulness in this energy for better tomorrows because we can see what we must do to make things better for ourselves. And those called will make things better for other people too in the process. Now, if this is resonating for you, you're already seeing this stuff kind of play out in your world where you're like, yeah, it's time. Like I need to make that self-investment. It's time to go to the doctor. It's time to start that business. It's time to expand the business I've got. It's time to quit this job and launch my product line into the world. If you're really seeing this kind of like, yeah, I'm ready. It's time kind of thing. Time to invest in myself kind of thing in your own world hit the like button and subscribe. I'm here at the new and full moon to talk you through the way the energies play out and how to use them in constructive ways for yourself. Now, there's an additional interpretation here of this new moon in Leo because Leo is a sign that deals with our creativity and manifestation of change as the fifth sign of the zodiac. Creative breakthroughs for all in the creative arts can be had here. This is new ideas beginning to flow with Mercury trining Uranus at this time. Mercury deals with consciousness and ideas. Uranus in conversation with that Mercury gives us a lot of creative spark energy. And Mer Mercury is preparing to go retrograde. And with that retrograde, that revisitation of either ideas we've already tossed out there or conversations we've already had, Virgo is planning strategy, third dimension, physical health and well-being, et cetera, and our day-to-day -day routines, this gives us the opportunity to locate new creative solutions to old problems. It also makes me extraordinarily hopeful for all of the creatives and workers on strike right now worldwide that win-win solutions are available at the bargaining table and in conversations now, more now than ever before. So this is, I think we're going to see some breakthroughs as we get through the Mercury retrograde and through this Venus retrograde for all striking workers and creatives at this time. And that's exciting to me. Um there can also be breakthroughs on creative projects um, as well for those of you who are artists or artisans or entrepreneurs and you're like, you may have gotten into some gridlock either with others or in your own mind, like, okay, but where do I take this from here? Where do I take this project? How do I build on this from here? You may find yourself in this energy really getting into a place of like, aha, this is what I can do. Aha, 
I can take this from this piece and that from that piece and put it together and make something completely new and different. And that's really exciting as well. Further, and here's the third interpretation of this new moon in Leo energy as Leo deals with children and is the sign governed by the sun. In this energy, there's a lot of healing for our inner child with the Chiron influence as well. Chiron here in Aries deals with our own internal wounding and allowing us to transmute <clears throat> the wound into wholeness and so we can find the wisdom in it. And so this is may have some things come to light that may need our attention, uh, either from our childhood or places where we have, you know, felt hurt or wounded in our past. These things may come up at this time needing our attention and for us to just be with and hold ourselves and witness how far we've come in spite of what we've been through. And so there's a major opportunity to put down, let go trauma and pain stories, stop letting the past um, run our present and the stories that we've made up about ourselves dictate our possibilities, especially when it comes to love and money, because of the way that Venus is so present and she specifically deals with love and money. And she's sitting right on top of this new moon in Leo. Okay. There's a huge chance to create a new timeline here. If we can focus on the wisdom from the wounding, that's the Chiron piece of this. And let our worlds get bigger because of it, not smaller. There's a real chance for some self-healing and manifesting new stories with this energy. Okay, so I, I like to see all of that. There's a potency. There's a potentiated state here and a lot of potential that can get unlocked in this energy if we're willing to really stand in some of the higher vibrations of this energy, okay? And so I like to see it, and we're gonna talk more specifically about love in a moment here and money with the Venus retrograde. And I'm gonna give you guys a detailed breakdown of this Venus retrograde and how to leverage it to move yourself forward in love and money in a moment, so stay tuned. And listen at the end for first look um, for the full moon in Pisces, because that's when we're going to start to get into the beginning of the Mercury retrograde energy. If you're new and you're feeling this, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, because um, I'm here at the new and the full moon. And if there's been a lot of chaos or changes in relationship or career or money, things feel up in the air or you're uncertain about what to do, especially with the way Uranus, Uranus, Uranus is the, the king of chaos up here. He's, that's what he's known for bringing to the table. Um, unpredictability, instability, unchain, like changes that you couldn't foresee. If there's been some of that, now's the perfect time to book a reading with me and understand what's the lesson, what's the purpose of the change, what's the direction of growth, what are your options from here? Which doors are closing so that you can stop trying to get back into them and wasting time that way? And which doors are opening so you can run towards those and get a head start on your new directions? You can book with me over at kmoonastro.com. The link is below this video to do so. Now, let's talk about love and let's talk about money. Very exciting things here. Um, more specifically, because the way Venus is showing up here is telling a major story of growth and change, although it's not particularly straightforward because she's retrograde. So let's, before we get into all of that, let's talk about Venus retrograde. Let me clear some of these up for you. Let's talk about Venus retrograde here. And we also need to talk about Uranus because she is squaring off with Uranus at that 90 degree angle. And then we need to talk about what squares actually mean. Okay. Now, Venus herself, she represents love. She represents 
money, beauty, receptivity, magnetism, and what we're drawn to. Commonly during a Venus retrograde, people report the following types of experiences in love. X is returning. And it, with the Uranus squared of Venus retrograde, these people can pop up out of nowhere. People report uh, reversals in current love relationships. Either we were on a break, but now we are definitely no longer on a break. We were going really good. Everything seemed fine. And out of nowhere, now we're on a break. Okay. There can be sudden distance or coldness growing in relationships when Venus goes retrograde as well. And in money, this is when people report a slowdown in earnings or business if self-employed or a decrease in profits when they work for a company. Venus retrograde is not a bad thing because Venus represents our desires, our ability to receive and our ability to magnetize. So when she's retrograde, this comes to a pause and it gives us time to reflect, adjust, and figure out what we really want. Venus retrograde has the ability to expose the truth of our desires to us and really help us understand and differentiate what we want from what we think we want or what we're supposed to want. Now, Venus also represents beauty, skin, hair, nails, tattoos, beauty treatments, piercings, all of that. And what's commonly said about Venus retrograde is that things started during a Venus retrograde typically have a major readjustment once Venus goes direct, or they just don't survive Venus going direct. And so financial investments made uh, commonly end up needing to either get undone or needing to get reassessed. Amorous gestures made commonly get reversed, i.e. proposals or get back togethers can kind of go the opposite direction. Breakups and split ups don't tend to stay split. If they, <clears throat> if they happen during a Venus retrograde, business slowdowns tend to pick back up once Venus is direct. And if you lost your job during a Venus retrograde, it's very likely it or one like it will be available to you once Venus goes direct. You get the idea. Um, during this time, you may also, during the Venus retrograde, need to revisit business ideas or products from the past, dust them off, and make sure that you got all the juice out of that lemon. That may also be the only lemon with any juice in it during a Venus retrograde. So if you've got a business and it's like, okay, my bill, what I was doing to make money in the present time isn't working, you may have to backtrack during the Venus retrograde, dust something off on the past, make money from it, and then move forward once Venus goes direct. This is also a really great time to review your finances, cut excess spending, or even reorganize our spending so our acquisitions are in alignment with our true desires. New beauty treatments, if undertaken at this time, if they're new to you, like let's say you've never dyed your hair XYZ color, like purple, right? It's recommended that you do not dye it purple during Venus retrograde. You may view it very differently once Venus goes direct and even regret it. Adjustments may be required or corrections may be required once uh, Venus goes direct. Now, if it's something you've done before, like let's say you're used to dyeing your hair, I don't know, red. Red is the color you always dye it. During Venus retrograde, fine, no big deal. But if you're like contemplating like a major tattoo or some piercings, it's always recommended that you wait until Venus is direct to see the perspective then and if you still want it, okay? Uh, you get the idea. If things are going one way before Venus retrograde, Venus retrograde hits, something new begins to unfold, especially because Uranus, who governs newness, throws a wrench in the works. Once Venus goes direct, though, things are going to go back to the way they were, or the new thing undertaken is going to require an adjustment to stabilize it and bring it into right alignment. All right. So 
here are our Venus retrograde dates so that you have them. Venus went into shadow on June 19th. Okay, so that was the beginning of themes from Venus retrograde starting to surface in our lives. She actually stationed retrograde on July 22nd. Okay, so we're about hmm, three weeks in. Okay, or two and a half weeks in. Now, she's going to station direct on September 3rd. And that's when we will start to see things that cropped up during the retrograde redo themselves once she goes direct. And then on October 7th, that's when we're fully done with this energy and she exits the retrograde zone completely. Okay. Now, if you're struggling in this energy, now's a great time to book a reading to get some clarity about the direction of things, either in love or money. You can book with me over at kmoonastro.com. Link is below this video. Now, Uranus's influence in square to Venus conjunct this new moon is what bring is what makes this particular Venus retrograde so challenging because squares are challenging in and of themselves. Any planet square another planet instigates a level of constriction is the best word I can put it. It's a sense of like, oh my God, everything needs attention all at once. Or this sense of like, none of the doors are open and I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. It's a sense of almost being pulled when you have a square. And when Venus and Uranus are in square, this is when Uranus tends to bring surprises in love and or money things that were unpredictable, things we couldn't have planned for, and certainly in beauty as well, okay? Now, because Uranus governs the unique, the unusual, revolutions, revolts, rebellions, and quantum leaps forward in consciousness and technology, we can get quantum movement, lightning, and electricity. It's really the sense of like newness in every way, in the arenas that Venus is touching. And so in Leo, we're specifically dealing with a sense of selfhood, a sense of sovereignty, um, a sense of who we are. Taurus as well is a sign that deals with our selfhood, it's self-love, self-respect. And this again, may be this why we feel such a high calling to like, I got to change it all up. I got to invest in myself. I got to do something new for me in this energy. Okay. Right now, uh, as she's touching Venus from, as he's touching Venus from that aspect of tension uh, that astrologers call a square, this can bring out some of the shadow side squares can do bring out the shadow side of both planets, forcing motivation for transformation. Now the shadow side of Venus and love is extreme. She can either be clingy, like, you know, like latching and like, can't let go. It's a very kind of sticky, oozy, like clingy energy and narcissistic. And at the other side where it's like, no, if you're not clinging to me, I don't want you. It has to be all about me, that kind of thing. And money, the extremes can be overspending or hoarding. And with Venus in shadow, um, the shadow side of her energy in beauty and pleasure. It's like overindulgence and gluttony on one side. And on the other side, it's self-denial and complete rejection of the physical for the higher spiritual ideals. You get the idea. It's a, it's imbalanced in some kind of way. And Uranus can just bring that shadow side out of her with a square to Venus conjunct the new moon, it would be all too easy to start a new cycle in the shadow side of Venus's energy only to need to back it up and reverse it once Venus goes direct. And because the shadow side of Uranus is impulsivity, it could happen without too much thought. And this is where you can really see two people who know they have no business being together. They're not good together they just like hop back into bed like overnight and it's like sudden you know kind of like let's just indulge (laughs) that kind of thing 
It's a very impulsive energy with that where it's like, let's just chop off all of our hair or let's just spend all of our money on this one thing. Let's just go to a casino and gamble it all. We'll win, especially with Jupiter in square to Venus and conjunct nearly to that Uranus. This is not a highly thoughtful energy. This is an energy that's very impulsive, seeking its own pleasure. Hmm. This is an energy that can, in fact, however, in the good news, be used to our advantage if we've been really stuck when it comes to love or money. Break through through breakthrough with an extremely stubborn personal block is available with this. And so here's some ways you can use this in the light. If you were already in the shadow side of some of these energies, this is your chance to ride a wave of impulse and do some self-love things like suddenly just get therapy, get a financial coach, start a new healthcare routine that beautifies you from the inside out. Strip down and go back to basics when it comes to your beauty routine or any of the above. Strip back your wardrobe to only the pieces that bring you joy that you truly love. Just pick up the phone and make the amends or apologize to someone that you did wrong. Apologize to yourself for letting yourself stay in circumstances where you got done wrong. Make amends with yourself, repurpose old art or art supplies and materials for something new. Just jump up one morning and reorganize your budget to focus on things that boost your happiness and enhances your personal power and well-being. Removing spending that drains your power, like just cut those subscriptions that drain your power off. Okay. And add on spending that is more of a self-investment. It's a really great time to impulsively change the way you show up in your key relationships or at work as well. One of my uh, my coach, uh, Yielded Vessel, I had her here on the channel uh, not that long ago. She, I remember she told a story about how she was doing really well in her department at work ages ago at the company she worked for until the boss who was above her left. That boss left and she was directly in line for the promotion, but she caught a lot of flack from people around her Um who wanted the position as well, didn't really like her very much. And she, and this is a perfect example because she talked about how those folks uh, really kind of, they gave her hell a little bit and she gave back every bit as good as she got. And that's what we were talking about at the beginning of this video, where in this, this particular time frame. You know, you may see people who feel like they've been put upon really start the process of giving it back to you um, or giving it back to the people that are giving it to them. You may not have the patience to withstand nonsense at this point in time. Okay. And so that's what she was doing. Um, she just, she dished out as good as she got. And what ended up happening was, you know, other people started to move ahead in, in the company before she did. And so she took some time, she got in prayer around it and she just woke up one morning and she just decided, I'm just going to stop and I'm just going to be different. She got up, she went to work. She said, hello to people. She said, good morning. It was a different day. She was intentionally being new. And within 24 hours, a promotion fell in her lap. Her energy changed people changed in the way they behaved toward her because she internally made the decision to change inside. This is a, this is a moment, this new moon in Leo, where you could just suddenly wake up and just decide, you know, maybe you and your ex-spouse have been in disagreement about the kids, right? And custody stuff. This is a moment where you just wake up one morning and you just decide, you know what? I'm just going to be different with this person. And that's what shifts the entire custody battle or shifts the entire arrangement. Cause you just decide it's not worth you internally holding and having hostility within yourself. Okay. 
This is also an op- a moment in time where you can pick up any missed opportunities from the past and make them work for you at this time. So if there are things like projects you may have launched in the past, maybe it didn't sell. You you know, maybe you tr- wanted to launch, you know, some sort of like line of skincare and it didn't work. Now's the time where if you decide to dust it off, you want to pick it back up, you want to try it again in some new energy, you could see sudden success in this. That is like, you just could, you could never imagined it could have happened for you. And it does. It's definitely a get yours kind of energy, but you know, in healthy ways, right? So if you're trying to figure that out for yourself, you can always book a reading. Link is below the video to do that. Now, lastly, I want to talk about accessing this energy because the access to this, the reason why we may feel a little bit like one foot on the gas, one foot on the brakes is because while Venus and Jupiter are like, go, 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 let's move forward. Let's dive in. Let's self-invest. They're both sitting inside of Taurus. Now, Taurus is governed by the planet Venus. So what Venus do, the way, what what Venus is doing, the way Venus is expressing is the way Taurus is going to express. So as much as Uranus and Jupiter, opportunity bringer and lightning quantum mover are like, go, 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 let's move forward. Because the planet that governs them is technically moving backwards. It's literally like being in the car and having one foot on the brake and one foot on the gas in this energy. And this is only heightened and amplified because two of our other transformation energies are sitting in conjunct to Venus. Now, in conjunct is an energy of a conversation astrologers called a no conversation. It's an energy where they're in signs that do not speak harmoniously or technically speak at all, not even intention. So we can't access Neptune and we can't access Pluto at this particular lunation and Pluto ends things. Thank goodness. Sometimes things need to end and Neptune dissolves things. Thank goodness. Sometimes things need to dissolve on their own, but we are ha- we might struggle to access them from the perspective of this new moon because they're both in conjunct. Now, the way to access these is to have these two speak to one another. Okay. And when they start speaking to one another, Neptune and Pluto, That's when we unlock the power of forward momentum of this new moon in Leo. Neptune and Pluto, when they start to speak to one another, this is about using our spiritual Neptune power, Pluto, to access the upgrade potential of this new moon. Neptune is spiritual connection, imagination. Pluto is power, fear, control and resurrection cycles in the sextile, which is what they are. They're 60 degrees apart from one another. These energies are harmonious when we apply them. And the application here is supporting intuition, using your supernatural perceptivity and your clairs to understand information that is not obvious. This is about connecting the dots of things behind the scenes, looking beyond the surface to some degree. And this energy can give way, unfortunately, to conspiracy theories and shadow. So you want to make sure to fact check any conclusions that your intuition is revealing to you, especially as we get into the Mercury retrograde. But where it applies to ourselves and our own personal relationships, we can use this to create compassion. We can use this to create understanding for where others are coming from and give them the benefit of the doubt without sacrificing our position or our power. Okay. There are a lot of both and solutions if we can use our intuition to cultivate compassion and understanding for other people. What's going to make sense in terms of self-love can come from a place of win-win instead of in order for me to win, you have to lose, or in order for me to be right, you have to be wrong. 
You know, I think of that guy from Deep Divers. I, I don't know his name. I don't watch his channel a lot, but I remember stumbling on one of his videos in 2020 and he said something like, he really said it best. It was something the agree of, you don't have to put down what you loathe to promote what you love, or you don't have to, you know, uh, put down what you hate in order to promote what you love. He said something like that. Okay. And so that's kind of the vibe here of this. And so it's, I wanted to make sure that I said that for you guys, because Lilith, Eris, and Chiron here can have all of us feeling, like I said, it, it's a petty energy. It's a self-righteous energy. And typically whenever there's self-righteousness or pettiness going on, there can be a little bit of like, yeah, I'm right and you're wrong. That's the simplest way to put it. And it just doesn't have to be that way. The final energy of import here that I want to talk about um, is that of Mercury and Virgo trying Jupiter and Taurus and that Mercury also trining Uranus and this and Mercury conjunct Mars. I think this is probably my favorite part of this particular Venus retrograde is these planets doing what they are doing um, because Mercury is already in the retrograde zone. It's going to retrograde backward. Hang on. Let me give you the exact dates of the Mercury retrograde because I do have them for y'all. Um, Mercury retrograde is August 23rd to September 14th. So just note those for yourself. August 23rd through September 14th. Because Mercury is going to speak to Jupiter and Uranus multiple times over the retrograde. The first time has already happened as it's moved forward. During this period of time, that was right at kind of the 8-8, the Lion's Gate, and just before it, 8-1. So that was the full moon in Aquarius. And then this one, the new moon in Leo, that was the first time. It spoke to Jupiter and Uranus and Jupiter and Uranus together. This is like quantum, quantum, quantum movement forward. This is like lottery winning move, like jumping, like skipping steps into a better future. Okay. Now Mercury will speak to them again when Mercury moves backward. And then a third time, once it moves forward to move direct. Okay. Okay. Now, Mercury is consciousness. And so with this, we're going to get a lot of ideas um, that are going to be ready for immediate implementation because they're both in Earth signs. Jupiter and Uranus are in Taurus, Earth sign Taurus, and Mercury is in Earth sign Virgo. A lot of planning and strategy and a little bit of rehashing as Mercury goes retrograde. I think this is also what makes me the most hopeful for everyone in the service and creative industries that are on strike during this season, because th this will be the time period where real negotiations will start to unfold. Okay. The trine to Jupiter, mm -hmm. there's a lot of concrete work getting done in consciousness and communication as well. A lot of strategy, optimism, planning, implementation of new contracts, new ideas, and that this is how we'll wrap up the Venus retrograde is going to be a huge support, like I said, for anyone who's on strike for better pay everywhere. September and October are going to be breakthrough months on that front. Okay. So, you know, if you've been feeling like, ah, this Venus retrograde threw a giant wrench in my works, all good. Take a deep breath. The Mercury retrograde is going to get you to the table to talk through things, think through things, re-strategize, replan. Okay. And that is going to be constructive for any place where there's gridlock, especially financial. I've got a few clients going through divorces right now and trying to figure out division of assets. And so this period of time is going to be really constructive, especially as we get into, and I'll talk more about it then, the full moon in Pisces and new moon in Virgo in two weeks and two weeks after that. But if your life cannot wait and you really need options now, now's the right time to book a reading with me. Link is below this video and I'm over at kmoonastro.com 
for those of you who are in fact ready to do that. Now, let's get into first look. I want to give you my first impressions of said uh, full moon in Pisces in just one moment. All right, so here's our full moon in Pisces on August 30th, 2023 at 9.35 p.m. If you happen to be on the eastern seaboard of the United States, here's our full moon at the seventh degree of Pisces, Ooh, sitting real close to Saturn there. Okay, that's interesting. Moon conjunct Saturn, and here's our sun at the seventh degree of Virgo. Okay, that's interesting that we have a relatively unaspect full moon. That's also somewhat rare. Interesting. Okay. Mars is in conjunct. Juno is in conjunct. So we've got another yod here. Hmm. And Jupiter is loosely sextile we'll say wow okay so the dominating influence on this full moon in pisces is saturn i'm loving it and you'll see at this time mercury's already in retrograde but not truly in conversation with the new moon only because mercury's at the 19th degree and that's too far away to be considered directly opposite this is going to be a fascinating period because this is an energy where it's like the rubber is going to hit the road. And this is where we're going to start to see some of the ideas and thoughts and things that we really wanted to do during the, the ideas that came in during the Lionsgate, during the new moon in Leo and the full moon in Aquarius. It was an idea rich, very fertile period this is a time because Saturn represents structure, boundary, and discipline where we're going to be asked to apply some of those things in more concrete ways and really take what we thought would be a great idea and implement it. You know, I also see here that with Saturn opposite or Saturn conjunct moon, this is a period of time that will probably be far less emotional. I definitely see, saw during the Lionsgate, the new moon in Leo and the full moon in Aquarius, there was a lot of emotionality in that energy. That emotionality tapers off into kind of more grounded spiritual awareness, spiritual insight with this lunation and gives us an, a, a capacity to really see the see the trees and the forest, not just the trees and not just the forest. It gives us a, a capacity to be a bit more practical about what needs to happen. There's also a bit of spiritual discipline and fortitude in this to really like, okay, I see what I need to do. Let me just put my head down and do it. I'm ready to get it done. Let me dive in. Let me not complain. Let me just make something happen here. So I do really like to see that you'll see here mercury is moving retrograde and is preparing to talk to jupiter one more time so there's still a lot of hope good faith here during this particular lunation like i said it's a great time to work things out hammer things out with anyone that you've been at odds with um you guys know i will tell you if there's a period of time where communication seems to be a little bit unclear or problematic, there's a little bit of that here because Neptune is opposite Mercury. Some things in communication might be a little bit challenging during this period of time. There's a little bit of may not get the full story. You definitely need to read and reread the fine print for any agreement you sign to. Um, don't agree to anything that victimizes you, of course, obviously. Um, and you want to make sure with this that you are not withholding, that you are being transparent and upfront with people that you're in negotiations with about what you expect and what you really want. Um, but with Jupiter speaking to that Mercury, it does seem like communication has the potential to be done in good faith and done really well. It's just going to be a matter 
of, you know, staying in good communication uh, with folks as you're moving through any process of implementation on either team or group projects or negotiations as well. Uh, so I like it. I like it a lot. It's way more grounded than Leo season. Leo season had us all swinging from the rafters. Thank you, Leo. Bye. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, this grounded, once we get into Virgo season and this full moon in Pisces, it, things look to be far more stable, um, which I am here for. So that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for every like subscribe and share. And I don't know if you even make it this far in the video, but I really just want to say I have the best subscribers Everyone I've ever seen like comment on the channel. You guys are kind. You are thoughtful. You're respectful to one another. You're respectful to me. You keep the keyboard coaching to a minimum. You're not over here like self-promoting or, you know, trying to like do, I don't know, random stuff in the comment section. I see people do on other channels. I really want to say I appreciate the way you all support one another and support me. It's been such a pleasure to see that since I reopened the comments on this channel post 2020, how kind and loving you guys are. Thank you for being here and you know where to find me. If you want to book a reading, I'll see you at the next lunation, the new moon, the full moon in Pisces coming up pretty soon. Take great care and bye for now.